the medication was not working. That's uh, correct. High dosage, and it was not even detectable in your blood system. That's correct. So, um, you know, and to be that severely depressed and have that much um, going on, I'm sure that must have been very hard at home. Well, it was. But, but first of all, let me say something. Um, I've been married to this man of God for 51 years. And I tell you what, he is such a, he is such a blessing to me. And I look back at those times, and it's, it's another life. He was a he was a totally different person. Um, he was so angry, and he couldn't help himself, and uh, depressed. Um, hardly had uh, could get from day to day. So we we were all really truly affected by his uh, emotional up and down mm-hmm. uh, and his anger issues. And um, fortunately, this. This wonderful couple uh, came to our place of business and were, was explaining to us that, uh, Jim, you don't have to be like this. Now, there is ask, help for you. But as all this is happening, every, y'all were saved, right? Yes, Children we were saved. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely saved. But you know what? We got saved, but we didn't know anything. Yeah. And we weren't taught. And I won't mention the churches we were into at the time, <laughs> but... We weren't taught about, you know, um, spiritual things yeah. and, and how God could really set us free. Yeah. So. Um, so they came in. They said, "You don't have to live like this." Exactly. And what? Did, what? Did, I mean, how did y'all receive that? Well, you know, it, it was like really. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm ready. We didn't know that there was a a, a true solution mm-hmm. to this. So, what kind of uh, things had you done to try to um, help? I mean, I know medications, of course. Well, yeah, medications. But you know what? I wasn't even at a place where I felt I could help him, um, you know, because of his, his anger issues and his uh, temper. Uh-huh. Um, you know, he, uh, he kind of put a few holes in the walls where yeah. we had to keep moving pictures to cover up the holes. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to redecorate quite a yeah. bit. But, you know, so when this couple told us that, you know, God could change him and set him Mm. free. I was, you know, I I probably was in doubt. Yeah, a little skeptical. I could see that. I was, you know, because certainly uh, the doctors weren't able to help him. Right. And that's what we're told in society now is you just go go to the the doctor. doctor, Give him, you know, and so nothing really was helping him. Medication is the... Yeah, and I think they were even thinking of... um, electric shocks or, oh, wow. or whatever at mm-hmm. at that point and and so to be set free oh my is thank it you. possible you know yeah thank you jesus hallelujah so so you see there was a night and day difference now how uh how how many spirits came out that first time when they took him through deliverance do you remember well i do remember mm-hmm. i remember because they basically came against depression uh-huh. and um that's all we knew about at that time. Yeah. I mean, that's a long time ago. So um, when that depression spirit came out, um, it, it was, I mean, he could feel it leave physically. Wow. So we also knew it was a generational curse. Mm. So when that left, it also left our two children Hallelujah. at the same time. Praise God. <laughs> and they felt it leave because they physically said, it's gone. There you go. You know, it's that's absolutely amazing. I love to hear the testimonies of things like this. That when when you have you're at the end of your rope, you know, well, it's, it, yeah, the doctors absolutely. are talking about electric shock. I had a family member mm-hmm. that they did that to. The family member was a schizophrenic, and this was a generational curse. Mm-hmm. And when I went through deliverance, part of my testimony was that schizophrenic spirit was there, mm-hmm. and it identified itself from coming from this family member. And so we broke the curse, and and so that that cut it off at the hill. Well, Satan will try to scare you and That's make right. you think that you know you don't need to go through deliverance. It's not going to work. And and some people know they need help, but they don't they don't want to. They're just too scared. But an incentive to me is if you know you're battling something, you know your kids are battling it. You know that it's generational. It's more of an incentive to 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 suck it up. Yeah. Your your fear and, and go and go get checked out if you're battling with something like that. That's right, 100. percent Now, you know, Doctor Fent, if somebody, yeah, you know, 
if I've been through deliverance, so okay, so I've been through deliverance. Now, does that give me the license to just walk down the street and go, yeah, I, I, a Christian friend of mine is is that struggle with the same thing, anger and depression. Can I just go tell them, hey, you need deliverance? No. Okay, why not? <laughs> you know, I, I I wouldn't recommend it. And in, in, in all the years we've been in it, I've never told anybody, you need deliverance. Um, the, the, you've got a demonic spirit that has to, you know, you need to be set free from. They have to recognize that yeah. themselves. They have to recognize that they have a problem. Um, and, and we require them to contact us or to contact somebody in the Spiritual Freedom Network to, to get set free. Now, people know if they have a problem. People yeah. know if they have uh, emotional issues uh, like depression and so forth. They know if they have anger issues or bitterness or hatred or unforgiveness. Uh, they know if they have addictions to drugs and yeah. addictions to other things. I mean, it, there's so many different categories. They know if they have those problems. And if they want to get set free, we're just saying there's an avenue. You know, the most that I would probably tell somebody is that you don't have to live this way. That's right. Now, what do you tell a... Um a Christian, because we ran into this. And so what do you tell the Christian that says that uh, when you say, can a Christian have a spirit of fear? And they say, yes. And you say, well, and, you know, Timothy, it says that, you know, the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear. And you ask him, can a Christian be depressed? And they say, well, yeah, that's a chemical imbalance. And you tell them you don't have to live this way, but they still believe that it's a chemical imbalance. How do you well, uh, combat that? Well, that's what they told me. It was a chemical imbalance in my brain. But <laughs> when they cast the demon out, it seemed to, you know, to solve the problem. So. The chemical imbalance became <laughs> level. That imbalance when that spirit, lifted. When that spirit came out, yeah, there was uh, everything was balanced. So. Isn't that amazing? God is yeah. so good. Amen. I know that that was what happened with me with uh, cigarettes. I, I didn't go through deliverance when uh, when I was set free from the addiction to cigarettes, but I just went around. I told everybody I saw, I quit smoking. Hey, I quit smoking, well, and God delivered me from that. And it, but it, I was told it's it's genetics. It's uh you know it's hereditary. You know it's addictive trait in your uh, DNA. Well, when I finally did get to go through deliverance, there was a spirit also of addiction. Mm-hmm. And pastor took me through deliverance, and it says, uh, is this addiction to cigarettes in there? And that thing says, no, it left a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and that's the beautiful thing with deliverance. I ha- I've, I smoked for 25 years, and I started when I was uh, 10 and a half. So this is something, I it's a lifestyle. And Absolutely. like you said in the last episode we did was I enjoyed smoking. I yes. really did. And um, so he set me free from that. My lung function completely came back. Uh, and I haven't had a desire for a cigarette in almost three years now. Amen. And it, you know, God is so good. Um, how, now how long Dr. Fent was, uh, your deliverance, your first deliverance? How oh, long ago? Oh, how long ago? Mm-hmm. 27 years. 27 years. So is deliverance a one time you done deal? Oh no, 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 no. We've been through deliverance several times. Um, the, one of the things that back then when, when we first got in deliverance, we understood all we understood was that if you had an issue uh you could get set th- set free uh through deliverance it could be anger it could be depression it could be you know um, uh, an addiction whatever it was um then god when we were in the mission field god showed us a whole process and how someone can get totally set free that's the process that that we use today um, it goes from the very beginning of pre-qualifying someone um, all the way through the deliverance and the follow-up and maintenance afterwards. That's awesome. Now, I have a, I have a two-part question, one for each of you with the same question. I'm going to start with Miss Marty. How did, how did deliverance impact your relationship with God? You told us how it kind of your husband was night and day before and after deliverance, but how did it, how did it affect your relationship with God? Well, you know, it it showed that he was there. Yes. And that he cared. Oh, and that yes, he cares ma'am. about every aspect of your life. Yes, ma'am. So that's that's the change. And from that point on, not only what he did with us, but our children and how we we learned to protect them and you know, all the spiritual warfare and all the things started coming into our lives and it just opened up a whole new world. Outstanding. Now, Dr. Finn, how about you? How did, how did deliverance it change your relationship with God? Well, there's no question about it. It changed my relationship. Uh, he became real. 
Mm-hmm. He became real. Uh, before, uh, I didn't have the same kind of a relationship with him. I prayed and I had a relationship, but but now I knew he was real. Yeah. You know, Scripture says that if you go through deliverance, you are visited by the kingdom of God. Yes. That's in Matthew twelve twenty eight, and and uh, and that's exactly what happens, and it changes your life. I think that's what we like about deliverance so much is we have the opportunity when we see people that go through deliverance, how, how it changes their lives. It Not really just heals their body uh, uh, physically or emotionally or spiritually, but, but it just changed their lives totally. It really does. I, it, we, we experience the same thing in our life, our, our relationship with each other, our relationship with our kids. Now, if someone out there is struggling in their marriage, Miss Marty, you and I were talking earlier, what would you say to them? Well, you can't go in and say, I, I guess Jim and I talk about this a lot, you know, when people need marriage counseling or people need help in their marriage, first of all, you have to help yourself first. Absolutely. So, you know, for so many times people come and they say, well, you, you know, help my wife. She's doing this or that. Or help my husband. He's doing this and that. You know, and we say, well, you know, you need to, let's fix yourself first. Okay. That's, that is that is awesome advice. That really um, is. But if, if, so you need to do some self-examination. Absolutely. You, you know, Absolutely. you need to, you need to fix yourself, fix your attitude and fix your um, problems before you can. Ad- and, and that's the key is you think about in John 14, what, what is the command? The new commandment I give you is that you love one another as I have loved you. So in everything we do, we're, we need to exhibit Jesus. We need yeah. to exhibit the love of Jesus and the, and the grace of and if we can't extend the grace and the love to people, whether it's unforgiveness or whatever it is, then it's time for self-examination. Absolutely. That is absolutely right. This has um, been an awesome discussion. Um, I hope that um, this has blessed people listening out there. Um, I know that uh, deliverance is real. Amen. And I Amen. know that you have seen a night sure. and day difference, even though it was a long time ago. There was a, a marked difference. Yeah. Um, with your your home life your marriage and even with your children yes well i didn't yeah, really but... like him before <laughs> <laughs> but now <laughs> you absolutely uh, love him uh, oh i not only love him i like him he's my best friend he's he's everything a woman could ask for so That's awesome god is good my well, i sure thank y'all for being in here with us again i hope we can get thank you back you next week okay we'll come back anytime you want awesome and I've been your host again, Jason Hicks, with my lovely wife, Paige. Y'all have a blessed day. And Mr. and Miss Finn. Okay, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> thank you for joining us today for our program, The Children's Bread, a product of the Spiritual Freedom Network. We hope that this program has been a blessing to you and your family. If you have any questions or would like to contact us, please visit us online at spiritualfreedomnetwork.com or you can call us at 803-761-7233. Remember, 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Thank you, and have a blessed day.